Hi, I'm Michael and this is California. And today, before we get started, there's two things I wanted to cover. The first is that May 13th at noon is the deadline for folks who need to update their Get My Payment tool on the IRS website so that they can get their stimulus checks direct deposited into their account. Um, so if you update your information, you put your bank account information in there by May 13th at noon, then the IRS will be able to send you your stimulus checks via direct deposit. And if you miss that deadline, then they're going to start sending out paper checks by May 15th. Um, so if you need the money quick, if you need the money fast, the direct deposit is going to be the quickest way to get that money into your account so you can use it for your daily necessities. Um, but if you missed it, May 15th, they're going to start sending out those checks and it could take days or weeks or even a month out to June before you get that check and you're able to cash it. So if you need it fast, make sure you update that information on the Get My Payment tool on the IRS website. And I'll put the link below. The second one is that we are seeing in the comments folks are getting their stimulus checks. So that is great news. Uh, we're really happy to see that those folks are getting their stimulus checks and if you have not got it yet just hang in there be patient they are sending them out on a weekly basis so uh, sooner or later they're going to get it out to you so you just got to hang in there and be positive so today let's look at the topics we're going to talk about so first we're going to talk about a couple plans that have been floating around the white house as far as how to get money into the hands of americans that seem faustian at best uh, it's definitely going to be a balance as far as uh, what you get now versus what you can get later. So we'll take a look at those plans as well as talk about a release that came out on May 11th from the IRS regarding why some folks are not getting their full stimulus checks. They're not getting the full $1,200 for adults or $500 for children. So we'll take a look at those different options reasons why some people are not getting their full stimulus checks. Now, before we do that, if you like the information we're putting out there, you find it interesting, you find it useful, please make sure that you like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. So first, let's take a look at two proposals that have been floating around the White House that would put Americans in a situation where they can get benefits now, a stimulus check now, but in exchange for getting less benefits once they get to retirement age. So the first one has been put out by Andrew Briggs and the American Enterprise Institute and Josh Ruh at the Hoover Institute at Stanford, which would allow Americans to get a one-time $5,000 stimulus check in exchange for delaying when they can uh, apply for their Social Security check. So say, for example, they're eligible for Social Security in January. January, they would have to wait maybe till June or even July to actually start getting their money because they took the $5,000 up front. And this is a perfect example of how time really is equal to money. Now, although this is uh, probably not the best plan, this is still better than the next plan, which is the Eagle plan. And the Eagle plan is a much more well thought out plan. It's 29 page proposal that would give Americans a stimulus check of $10,000 up front, but in exchange for a reduction in benefits later on when they reach their retirement age. Now, it's not specific about which or how much or how long those benefits would be reduced, um, but I can tell you right now that that's probably the worst idea out of the two. Um, first of all, because yes, there are undoubtedly tons of people who need money right now. They need money for their cars, they need money for food, they need money for rent. They need that money now and that should get out to them. But it shouldn't be at the cost of their future health or their future benefits that come out from Social Security or come out of when they hit retirement. The reason being is that by the time someone gets to retirement, by the time I get to retirement or anyone gets to retirement, there's no way to know what your health situation is going to be, what your financial situation is going to be, or what your life situation is going to be. You can make all the plans in the world, but not by the time you get there, you have no idea what they're actually going to be. So having these benefits uh, available when you need them, when you're able to retire, could have a great effect on somebody, but not having them could even be worse than not having the extra $5,000 or $10,000 now. Now, luckily, the White House has rejected these specific proposals, but it doesn't mean aspects of these proposals are not going to be put into whatever future proposals come out. And it gives a little insight into how they're thinking about how to reduce the amount of money that's actually going to come out of the government's pocket to put money into the pockets of Americans. But overall, I think that it's bad. It seems like a very terrible idea to put Americans in a situation where they have to consider, do I need to put food in my mouth now or do I need to, uh, do I need to lose money for my health care later? Okay, so next let's take a look at an updated form that came out from the IRS, a new update from the IRS regarding people who didn't get the full amount of their stimulus check. So there's a lot of folks, we see some of them in the comment, who didn't get the full $1,200 for an adult or $500 for their dependent. So the IRS released this new uh, update about why that could be, what are some potential reasons why that could have happened. 
Um, so the first one would be that if you filed taxes in 2018 uh, and you have not yet filed taxes for 2019 or you filed taxes for 2019 uh, and the IRS has not processed it, but the information is different, then the IRS may have used the 2018 information to send out your stimulus check. So if you had, for example, more dependents now in 2019 or 2020 uh, than you had in 2018, then you wouldn't get the full amount because the IRS is using that old information. Or for example, if they're using your old bank account or your old address, um, that could also be a problem. Now, in these situations, um, there's a couple remedies. So first is if the bank account information on 2018 is different from 2019 or 2020, um, then the IRS, when they send that check out, then if it gets rejected by the bank, the bank sends it back, uh, then they're going to send you out a paper check um, in the following weeks. Um, if the situation is that the dependents are different, so for example, say now in 2019 or 2020, you have more children or more dependents, I should say, um, than you did in 2018, you can still get the stimulus check for those children, but you have to include them on your taxes when you file for 2020. And then you'll take those $500 per dependent as a uh, tax return, on your tax return. Um, so that's in that situation. Now the next one would be if you claim somebody who was a dependent, but they're over the age of 17. So this could be if you're still claiming uh, uh, some of your children who are in college or who are college aged, uh, or for example, maybe you're claiming grandma, you're claiming your mom, who is obviously older than 17. Um, those folks are actually not eligible for stimulus checks. So a lot of folks are thinking, hey, I got three dependents, I got Johnny who's in college, and I got um, Mary who's my grandma, and all of my taxes. Um, but unfortunately, if they're over the age of 17 and you're claiming them as dependents, then you're not going to be able to get the $500 stimulus check for the dependents. And also, they're not going to be able to get the $1,200 stimulus check for adults. So unfortunately, that's just the way the rules are written. Uh, the next one would be for folks who are have past due child support. So across the country, it varies from state to state. Um, some states have protections to protect people from getting creditors and debitors from taking money from the stimulus check. Um, unfortunately, excluded from that is um, past due child support. So if you have past due child support that's not paid, it is possible that they can take that money out of your stimulus check. So you get a portion or they take some or all of your stimulus check. If that does happen, though, uh, you will get a notification from the Bureau of Fiscal Services indicating that they took the money and how much they took from you. Um, the next one is for garnishment and creditors. So again, across the country, different states vary, um, but it's possible that money could have been taken out for a past due credit or a past due debit that you had that had not been paid. Now, in states like California here, our governor, Gavin Newsom, has passed an executive order that disallows creditors from taking money from stimulus checks. Um, and in fact, if they did take money from your stimulus check, then you can actually request that they give the money back to you. Um, but that's just unique to here in California. It varies from state to state. Some states have that protection. A lot of states don't have that protection. Um, so it, you might want to look up whatever state you're in if that those protections are there if that money came out of your account from a creditor. And the last would be if you got too much stimulus money. Uh, and this seems to be very common in the case where you have uh, two spouses and one of the spouses is deceased. And in this case, the remaining spouse got two checks. They got $1,200 per person. Um, and so the remedy for this, the IRS is recommending that if you got a paper check, just write void on it and send it back to the IRS. Uh, the second way is if you got a direct deposit, then you'll write a personal check, put the information in the memo for who the check was for, and then send that back to the IRS and they will take the money back that way. Uh, but you definitely should not keep it if you have the extra money. So those are the main reasons why a lot of folks are not getting the full um, stimulus check. Um, there could be other reasons, uh, but these are the ones that the IRS has released. I guess these are the ones that are most common. So if you fall into one of those categories, you may want to look up what are some of those remedies and how to fix that, uh, or you may have to end up filing taxes in 2020 to get whatever money was missed this year. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that you found this video interesting or useful or at least helpful. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. Also, if you have any questions, you have any comments, we love your comments and questions, put them down below and we'll be happy to make a new post or a new video to answer some of those questions that you have. And then finally, we here at California, we know health insurance. So whether it's private health insurance or covered California or Medicare, Medicaid, Medi-Cal, or even looking at health insurance for your small group or small business, 
That is what we know. And if you're here in California, our services are 100% free. So I definitely understand that sometimes it can be very confusing if you're moving from your work insurance and trying to get health insurance on your own or you're turning 65 and you're trying to look at what your options are. That's what we can do. We can help you look at what your options are and also help you figure out which plan best fits your needs and your budget. So if you have questions about your health insurance, feel free to reach out to us at the information below and we'll be happy to walk you through that whole process. So that's it for California. I'm Michael wishing you a happy, healthy day.